From the corner of 16th and Peachtree Street, right next to the High Museum of Art in Midtown Atlanta, welcome to the First Presbyterian Church. I'm Senior Pastor Tony Sundermeyer, and I want to thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. And I would invite you now to join us in the worship of God. turn to your bulletin, the call to worship, I'd invite you to join me in this call and response. Come, continue on the journey. It is not far now, but where are we going? God is welcoming us to God's kingdom. Can we see it from here? We see it in the faces of those who know of God's love. Will that same love be given to us? It already has been given, and His name is Jesus. He is God's beloved Son, our light and hope. Quickly, let us journey toward His light. Friends, please remain standing and let's join our voices in our corporate prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. God of mercy, light, and love, we confess that we have not been people who are quick to pray. When an emergency befalls us, we turn to pleas and prayers that usually begin with the heart-wrenching cry, Why? Help us to remember that you are always ready to hear and respond to all our prayers. Remind us that even though we have often failed to witness to your love and live as people of compassion and faith, you love us unconditionally. Forgive our stubbornness and willfulness. Cleanse our souls and spirits and make us truly ready to receive your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's use this time to give our silent prayers to our forgiving Lord. Joy to the world. This then is the culmination of our years of waiting. We have lit the candles of hope and of peace. 
Today we light the candle of joy. Hear the words from the 122nd Psalm. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Our future and our dreams are in Christ. Our joy is in Christ. As we light the candle of joy, we remember the angels who brought news of great joy to the shepherds on the hillside. The long-awaited Messiah was coming, finally. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let us our songs employ. Let us sing to the glory of God. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. They can be found on page 650 in the Old Testament in your pew Bibles. Hear now the word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, our second text comes from the Gospel writer John. The first chapter, verses 6 through 8, and then continuing in verse 19 through 28. It can be found in your pew Bible on page 86. Continue to listen to God's Word, from God's Word to you and to me. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was, was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and 
did not deny it, but, but confessed, I, I'm not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are, are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. Friends, this too is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, break open your word afresh to us this day so that we would be different people than those who came into this sacred space this morning. Even to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, it's in his name that we pray. Amen. I am third generation American on my mother's side. Our family lineage comes from Italy, and if you know anything about Mediterranean people, North Africans, Greeks, Middle Easterners, Italians, the Spanish, you know that Mediterranean people love to talk with their hands. I mean, I remember growing up around tables and holidays and, and, and Christmas celebrations and Thanksgiving celebrations where it was absolutely chaotic, where multiple conversations were happening at once and my elders always had the, the uncanny ability to maintain their place in one conversation and then quickly shift to another. They were able to engage and that engagement was always animated. My family, when we communicate on this side of the family, the other side is German and we keep our hands to ourselves. But that Italian side, the body animation, the, the movement is very much present and it's part of the communication process. It's part of that interaction. I read this text in a particular way to you using some hand gestures. In particular, you might have noticed I did a little bit of finger pointing just into this section, not to anyone in particular, but, but just over here. Because in my mind's eye, I imagine this encounter as being pretty heated. I imagine this encounter being intense. I imagine that there is a lot of body movement, a lot of animation, a lot of inflection and different tone in the voice. I imagine a passionate engagement. As the religious leaders come to John the Baptist and they say, who are you? They do some finger pointing, I imagine. In my mind's eye, that's how I see it. They come and they, they put their finger right in the center of his chest and say, who are you? Are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Who are you? And I always have imagined John in this exchange, not pointing his finger back at them, not putting it in their face, not, not putting it squarely in their chest. I've always imagined him pointing out. I always imagined him saying, it's not about me or who I am, it's about him. I imagine him gesturing to something beyond himself, something that they can't see, something that is breaking in, 
something that is about to take place, something that's about to transpire. It's not about me. It's about Him, the light of the world that is, that is breaking into the world. That is going to change everything. That this light will shine in the darkness and the darkness will not be able to overcome it. There is a new way of being human on the move. A new way of being in community with one another. A new way of loving one another. A new way of bearing justice and mercy and forgiveness with one another. You know, Jesus, when He came, He talked about it in these terms. He talked about it in the kingdom, as the kingdom of God. That this reality was, was a new kingdom that God was inaugurating in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. A new way to be in relationship with God. A new way of being in relationship with one another. A new way of, of, of discerning what it means to be in the center of God's will for our lives. This reality known as the kingdom of God is breaking in. And John is the witness. John is pointing to it and saying, it's not about me, it's about Him. And it's about what He's going to do. It's about this kingdom that will change the world. I told this story a couple weeks ago in a, a class I was teaching on Wednesday nights in the Covenant class. So forgive me if you, you're hearing it now for the second time. But it really makes the point when Katie and I lived in Germany, we had a chance to meet some fascinating people. One of those uh, folks that we had a chance to befriend was a man by the name of Falker Weber. He was the closest thing to James Bond I had ever met. He was part of the West German intelligence sector. And when the Berlin Wall fell, he was charged to lead a, a group of uh, soldiers into East Germany and to do some reconnaissance, to go into former what they called intelligence houses, to unearth any documents that may be pertinent to the reunification of Germany and the new government that was emerging. And so they went to house, from house to house rather, and, and they looked for whatever they could find that would help them in this mission. And, and so they came to this one particular house and they didn't find much there. They were told that this was a, a central place in this neighborhood for, for uh, East German uh, political espionage and thinking. And, and so they, they did the, the, the sweep of the house and they went down into the basement and one of the soldiers found a hidden door. It was in the floor. And it led, led to a, a secret chamber that had a metal door blocking the outside from it. And so these soldiers, they drew their weapons and, and one of them went down and rigged the door with some small explosives. They blew it off and they, they rushed in to this room. And to their amazement, they found 20 bunks. They found enough food rations to sustain anyone for, for about two years. And they found 20 East German soldiers living there. But here was the amazing discovery. They still had a phone line connected to the Kremlin in Moscow. And the Kremlin was still giving them orders as if the world had not changed. They had no idea that the wall had fallen. So you can imagine their utter and total surprise when my friend said, Bruder, die Mauer is zerbrochen. The wall has come down. I think that's what it looks like in some fashion, in some regard, when we talk about pointing to a new reality. As the church of Jesus Christ, part of our call collectively and individually is to point away from ourselves. And to say it's not about me, but it's about this one called the Christ who is breaking into the world, who is establishing a new reign, a new reality. And as my friend pointed up those stairs to this, to this new reality, so does John point to the light of the world that's breaking in, and so should we in, in places of darkness. Now the struggle is for any Christian community who's paying attention, and I know we're paying attention, all you have to do is turn on uh, your, your internet connection. You have to uh, go on your smartphone. You turn on the news and you see that much of life is lived outside of this reality. 
And one of the great tensions, theologically speaking, in the life of the Christian and in the life of the Christian community is that the kingdom of God is here, but it's not yet. The kingdom of God is on the move, but it's not yet fully arrived. And so it's, it's hard to live in that tension. Let's be honest. We, we see what's happening in the world. We know that our lives aren't the way God desires them to be. We know that the world is not the way God desires it to be. And yet, the call within that tension is to, to point away from ourselves and to say, Christ is coming. The light of the world is breaking in. And we, we look for ways to enter and receive this kingdom. I'm very particular when I talk about the kingdom of God, whether I'm teaching or whether I'm preaching. And I'm particular in the, in the terms that I use to describe it. A lot of times you'll hear somebody say, or maybe you said it yourself, let's build the kingdom of God together. Maybe you've heard that before. The scriptures, when Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, he never uses, uh, never has the invitation offered to us that says you should go and build the kingdom. Take a look at the parables when he talks about the kingdom. You know the language he uses? Enter and receive. Enter and receive. Those who enter the kingdom of God will be like these. Receive the kingdom of God. It's never build the kingdom of God because only God can build it. So what is our challenge? What do we do then as a Christian community in light of this tension that the kingdom is here but not yet and in light of the call that we all have to point to Jesus, point away from ourselves and point to this new reality that's breaking in. I think what we do is we begin to develop the habits that prepare us to enter and receive the kingdom. And I think there, some of them are right there in Isaiah 61. Did you, did you hear some of that, some of that great great text that talks about what the kingdom of God might look like. It looks like comforting those who mourn. So think about it this morning. Who do you know that is mourning? Who do you know that is in grief? And how can you enter and receive the kingdom of God by bringing them comfort? By bringing them presence? By bringing them prayer? By bearing witness to the spirit of peace? that comes with Christ. Or we talk about justice. Or we talk about liberating the oppressed. Who do you know that's oppressed? Who do you know that is on the margins? Who have you demonized? Who have you put to the side? Who have you undermined? And how are you going to make that right? For when we make that right, we begin to enter and receive the kingdom of God. We're called to proclaim good news to people. I, I love this time of year because we're constantly reminded that this story of Christ is all about good news coming for all people. You have some good news. If you're in a relationship with God, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you have some good news to share. Share it. Share about what God has done in your life. Share about how God has moved you from here to here. Or even in the midst of your brokenness, share how God is present. That is a way we enter and receive the kingdom of God. Friends, I believe that the world is in desperate need of something else. I believe that the world is in desperate need of a new reality. I believe that this world needs something more than what we see from news cycle to news cycle. I believe what the world desperately longs for is this new reality called the kingdom of God. And we have been called to witness to it. We have been called to testify it to it. We have been called to sing the great songs of our faith. Savior of the nations, come. But may we even pray, would you come through us. Would you come, O light of the world, and break in through the way we live and love and practice faith and justice. May it be so for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of the world. Amen.
Maybe throughout this week we may be intentional and mindful of what we've heard this day, that, that it's not about us, it's about Christ, it's about His light breaking into the darkness. And maybe in some way, maybe some small way or some great way, we can be a finger pointer and point to the light that is breaking in. And that we may develop habits that prepare us to enter and receive the kingdom of God. And for that task and for that call, may the peace of Christ, which goes beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Him. May His peace live inside of you this very day and all the days ahead. Amen. And go in peace.